Support Wrestle Talk. Follow us on Twitter. Back when I was little, it was a little known secret divulged in hushed tones around the back of the bike shed at school that Jenny Evans had got with Joe Clarkson at Amanda Perry's party, but he never texted her back, so she was done with boys like forever. But also, that wrestling wasn't real. Now, Saying that to an actual wrestler is likely to get you a smack upside the mouth. A bit about the wrestling not being real, not a bit about Jenny Evans. Unless they happen to be Ryan Evans, her brother who grew up to become a wrestler. But then that would be some sort of Goosebumps level sh** about lies you tell coming to life. The point is, we all thought that wrestling wasn't real because people weren't actually trying to hurt each other. But as one botched Walls of Jericho on my living room floor told me, that just isn't true. I cried. I was 29. It was four weeks ago. And the problem is that there are some moves that hurt no matter how you cover up or tuck your head or brace yourselves. And I've gathered, well, I've made Andy gather 13 of the most painful used by WWE superstars today. I'm El Fegador, Laurie Blake, and here are 13 properly painful moves in WWE. Number 13, the Bailey to Belly. The talk, the height that Bailey gets on this utterly backbreaking move is hard to watch at times, particularly when she does it off of the second rope. The second rope? Are you insane? You'll kill someone. I would not want to be in the Raw Women's Division, both in general and because of this utterly devastating finisher. Only Bailey could turn a completely normal belly to belly suplex into a brutal murder machine. I am obviously kidding. It is shit. A belly to back suplex would actually be better. So we'll, we'll run that again. Number 13 again, chops. There are no two ways about it, really. The only way to get your chops to sound good and to make the audience go <gasps> is to flipping go for it. Just ask this guy from a party that we went to. Ask the man that Sin Cara slapped to death. Ask anyone that's had Walter's ham hocks imprinted on their skin for the next three days post-match. Chops. Suck. Number 12, the coup de grace. Finn Balor, so named after an Irish myth about a tiny man in a company full of giants who just can't seem to catch a break. Despite Finn's smaller, almost career stifling size, his finisher, the coup de grace, has to hurt. Having anyone jump onto you, feet first from several feet in the air, is gonna hurt. No matter how much you brace yourself for the impact. Of course, Finn is actually an incredibly talented performer and has near perfect aim, tending to place the move somewhere below the chest region so there are no chest bursting antics here. But even then, having Finn come and stomp you in the stomach, that's still 86 kilos, nearly 200 pounds, falling onto your belly. That's the weight of 5,733 digestive biscuits being dropped onto you, but without all the weird oily abs that he's got. It is lucky that Finn hits the move with such precision, as a full-on flying stomp to the sternum or to the diaphragm could be seriously painful and incredibly dangerous. Ribs have been broken by much less. Number 11, the Muta Lock. More commonly known in WWE as the Emma Lock or the Last Chancery, which is a slightly modified version, the Muta Lock involved tangling up your opponent's legs before leaning back and wrenching their neck back over your shoulder. I know what you're thinking, tying your legs up, grabbing someone else by the face. Sounds kind of nice. But actually, it is pretty excruciating. It's another move that hurts no matter how you take it, and Austin Aries has used it to great effect throughout his career. Because submission holds are far more complex than your normal move and therefore have the potential to be far more painful. It's much harder to make the move hurt less because you can't really make a stationary lock look weaker. Unless, of course, you're John Cena and the move is the STF, a hover hands hug for your head. Number 10, the Swanton Bomb. Much like the coup de grace, the Swanton Bomb is essentially a full grown man falling onto your chest or stomach. Unlike the coup de grace, however, it is far less easy to be as precise and therefore taking it is potentially far more unpleasant. In the mid 2000s, Jeff Hardy would hit the move at the top of his back, just skimming the opponents lightly as he landed on the other side of them, having performed a beautiful swan-like front flip. But it turns out that was painful for Jeff, who has instead now decided to just start laying in really hard, hitting with the full force of his back before flopping over into a pin. Again, tense all you want, but if you hit with a swanton bomb, you're gonna know about it, as you have to foist the rickety carcass of Jeff Hardy off you. Number nine, the accolade. Although he's largely transitioned over to the match kick now, Rusev made his name in WWE by finishing matches 
with the accolade, a move made famous as the camel clutch by the Iron Sheik. And kind of sitting on someone's back and then wrenching their neck and face up is pretty sore. There's not really much way of making this move not hurt. No matter how many muscles you have, someone's still kind of stretching you out and putting ungodly pressure on your lower back. If anyone remembers the rusev Kalisto feud, which I know I don't, Rusev would lock in the hold and basically snap Kalisto in half. And he's got a shorter torso than most anyway. This is a move that once defeated John Cena clean. And John Cena don't lose to no sissy move. John Cena don't lose. It's just not his thing anymore. Number eight, German suplex. A suplex itself is one of the most basic moves in wrestling. You pick them up, you put them down, simple as. But all of that changes when you cross the border into Germany and you turn that suplex Deutsch. Nearly exhibited by Daniel Bryan and Brock Lesnar at Survivor Series, if you do release German suplexes, it's quite possible to throw your opponent a bit too far, causing them to land on the back of their neck rather than the back of their back, which I'm sure just does wonders for the longevity of this Daniel Bryan return. And holding on to the German suplex doesn't exactly make it all that much better as overarching your back while hitting the move can leave your opponent in all sorts of trouble. It seems like the key is to hit it as flat as possible to ensure that your opponent lands on their back, but get it wrong, it's a trip to the chiropractor to have your neck cracked back into place. Lovely. Number seven, the guillotine. In this move, not only does your head get wrenched out of its socket, you're generally standing upright holding the full weight of another person with your neck. It could only really be made more painful if an actual guillotine was involved, but unfortunately, blading is banned in WWE. Flipping PG nonsense. Vive la revolution. Although it's rarely used as a finisher these days, there's no doubt that coming up against someone with a guillotine in their arsenal isn't something many people will be keen on. It's a little bit too choky for me likey. Number six, the pedigree. As Triple H just has happened to have suffered a torn pectoral muscle, it can usually hit the pedigree pretty hard. It's a move definitely designed for a smaller opponent, given that anyone about Kane's size can't move athletically enough for the move to hit anything other than their knee, but think back to SummerSlam 2013. Daniel Bryan had just beaten John Cena for the WWE Championship with Triple H as special guest referee when Randy Orton's music hits. And he comes with his money in the bank briefcase and then Triple H hits an absolute corker of a pedigree. You'll notice that Trips generally releases the arms to allow his opponents to soften the blow a bit, but either Bryan asked to be hit stiff or he just didn't want to cushion himself because he took it full on in the face and then funnily enough had to retire from concussions for a bit. Much like the Styles Clash, instead of tucking your chin, you need to untuck your chin to avoid paralysis and all that jazz. And it's possibly the worst use of all that jazz known to man. Don't die and all that jazz. Number five, the arm bar. Given that this is a move used by several UFC and MMA fighters, the arm bar is a bona fide ouchie. Used by a variety of stars over the years, such as Alberto Del Rio, Asuka, and Ronda Rousey, old rhombus herself, the armbar involves bending your opponent's arm back as far as possible, which unless you've got double jointed elbows like Alexa Bliss, pretty uncomfortable. And then if you're doing it in MMA and they don't tap, feel free to break the arm. Although it's a move, much like the ankle lock, that you can make look a lot more painful than it actually is, it certainly belongs on this list due to the sheer potential for being really bloody painful. Number four, the power bomb. Whether it's a Batista bomb, a blue thunder bomb, or even a Carly bomb, being thrown back and head first into the canvas is up there Oh, the least desirable things in the world, along with another Jinder Mahal title run. Tuck your chin as much as you like on this one, because unless you've got neck muscles the size of watermelons, the back of your head is going to spank the floor and you're not going to enjoy it. And you could just go the diesel route with a jackknife powerbomb and hit it ooh, as softly as humanly possible. But where's the fun in that? And if you really want to crank up the pain, just last ride the buggers. Number three, the Alabama Slam. This one hurts even more if done onto steel steps. You can just ask Elias. Basically a powerbomb, but with more time swinging through the air, the Alabama Slam has been used by countless wrestlers throughout history. The fact that it's almost always that wrestler's finisher is testament to how painful it probably is. Like a powerbomb, trying to tense while tucking your chin and making sure you land properly is pretty tricky. Especially it's hard to know where the floor is as you whiz through the air. Due to its particularly violent nature, the slam has had to be slowed down slightly in recent years, as it's a move that when hit stiff has serious concussion potential. And no one wants to have their career ended by being pancaked 
into the floor. If you want an even more painful version, look no further than Drew McIntyre's inverted one. There is so much chin crunching potential. It's silly. Number two, the rings of Saturn. I don't know if they hurt, but the rings of Saturn just look really unpleasant. I would 100% tap out to it. I'm tapping out and we're not even, we're just talking about it. Having both of your arms wrenched behind your back while in a seated position must suck to high heaven. It is yet another submission hole that you would struggle to make less painful than it already looks. You can easily make it look more painful though. Add a cross face in like Neville did for his King of the Cruiserweights run. Or do a weird variation using only your legs like Zack Sabre Jr. did in the Cruiserweight Classic. Which was honestly gross. He's like a weird chimpanzee child using his feet for hands. Number one, the Kimura Lock. Without a doubt, the most painful move on this list, and it's probably the most simple to do. Don't say we don't teach you anything. Another UFC staple, the Kimura basically involves mounting your opponent so they can't move before bending their bent arm back as hard as you can. It's a move that has genuinely broken several arms in its time, and even when lightly applied as it is in WWE, hurts like an absolute bastard. Brock Lesnar often whips it out when he finds himself in a tight spot in a match, most famously tapping out The Undertaker, which was a tap out not seen by the referee. Although we urge you not to try any of these moves at home, just bend your arm back and then push it back with your other arm, and you'll immediately realize why this move hurts. You've done it, haven't you? We just told you not to try this at home, and you've just gone and done it, haven't you? So disrespectful. Can't get a viewer sometimes. So, those are some painful moves that weirdly aren't banned by WWE. But there are a whole load of moves that are. Click the video on screen now to find out some more, and give us a subscribe to stay up to date on all of the latest wrestling news. I've been El Fakador, and that was Lucha.